England left everybody a little questioning their performance. Now, they did go out there and handle Slovakia 2-1, to one, but I don't know if handle is the right term because previous matchups, Slovenia 0-0, zero, zero, Denmark, England 1-1. One to one. They did beat Serbia, them fighting Serbs. They took them down 1-0. to zero. On the other side of things, when you look at Switzerland, recent performance, how have they made their path to where they're at today? They did take down Italy 2-0. to zero. That was a big one because prior to that, Hungary 3-1. to one, They tied 1-1 one to one with Scotland, and they tied 1-1 one to one with Germany. So at first pass, I was looking at these games, and I thought, with this game here is a team that uh, maybe Switzerland, a sneaky little opportunity. I kind of didn't mm-hmm. like what I saw with that England spot there last performance. And now we look at these numbers. We see plus 120 for England. Obviously, Harry Kane and the boys find a way to get that victory late. But the Swiss taking top scoring teams and putting them down into draw category out here at plus 280, the Swiss. Lou, we'll start with you. Is there a shot the Swiss are a live dog? Or am I just still drunk from last night? Am I allowed to curse on the channel? Of course, fire away. It's better. Uh, England's a fucking mess, dude. Yeah. I mean, this team on paper looks great. What's crazy to me, so that they've won win in regulation in the last five, and that was the Serbia game where. I mean, Southgate is just the worst. I, I could be, I am not a coach. I think all we would have to do, Mike, you just go and be like, hey, can you guys just go score? And we're doing a better job than what Garrett Southgate is trying to do here. This team is chronically known. They try to score early and then they just park the bus. They have no interest in going forward. Their defense, their back line's kind of a mess and they really haven't faced any kind of offensive juggernaut. The market continues to overvalue England pre-tournament game by game it's crazy switzerland on the other hand as i mentioned pre-show they have two of my least favorite players uh to exist in the world ever in Shakiri and granite jaka but granite jaka playing on leverkusen this year it's like he's a whole transformed guy he's a leader plays really well he's doesn't give up a blade of grass in the field with tackles he can take free kicks like the dude's becoming like a really complete leader of that team switzerland is a team on the ascendancy. They're a really good tournament team, too. They're not a grind out results. I have three bets on this game already. I feel this is a 1 1 waiting to happen. And maybe England gets lucky again in stoppage time, but this feels like a 1 1. I have Switzerland to not like the double chance plus half a goal. It's minus 150. I think England could win 1 0. Yes, that's in play. But to me, I think it's either 1-1 or it's 0-0 for the most part. I think Switzerland can absolutely force this to extra time. I bet the draw at plus 220. And then a little flyer, because I know how England likes to lose. Switzerland to win on penalties at 8-1 to one should probably be minus 180. Because that's how England likes to go out of these tournaments. And, I mean, we, that's what happened to Italy. I had a future in Italy in the, that Euro, so that was excellent. But... I just think Switzerland's the better drilled team. They're by default the better coach team because everybody's a better coach team than England. And uh, yeah, this is and, and then England. The last thing I'll say is it's going to be really interesting with the team selection. And I'd like to hear what, what Dan and Gaucho have to say about this because he gets crucified. Southgate gets crucified for everything he does. He brings on Ivan Tony, who I'm sure bet on himself to score. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I'm sure he had an anytime goal scorer prop on himself. That's what Ivan Tony does. <laughs> And all of a sudden, the team looks good. So I wonder if Southgate will realize, oh, wow, we were a lot more dynamic with this guy on the field. Like Cole Palmer can't even see the field. It's weird that he just is so stubborn to make changes. We'll see if he's forced into it. But either way, I just think Switzerland is going to have an answer for everything England does. They're going to make it ugly. If Switzerland scores first, probably a one nothing win. So I like this game a lot. And uh, I'm going to go to the English pub and I'm going to watch the, their tears will be delicious for me when they go (laughs) out. Yeah. One, one in regulation penalty win for Switzerland is my official prediction. We will kick it off to Dan here momentarily, but I want to thank everybody for coming out and hanging out with us this morning. It's bright and early. You could be laying in bed. You could be maybe packing up to go to the beach or whatever it is that you do on the 4th of July, but You've chosen to spend some time with us. That means a lot. We love you guys a ton. Want to keep bringing you guys more content. So 
please hit that thumbs up if you have not. And you'll see across the bottom here, uh, follow these boys here. We got Lou coming in. The first collab with the Sports Money Gang here with Subhuman and I. Across the bottom, you can follow him there on YouTube. And Dan with Slate Bets as well. So follow these boys over there on YouTube. Make sure you catch their content as they drop in there. They're giving us their best bright and early looks as we talk about these matchups, at least early here this morning. We kind of have to wait for some final lineups to get the job done. But we see Fernando Mendoza's in the house. We see Steve Gregory making some comments out there. Says Ronaldo cries more than Jordan Peterson. And Steve says over two is a good buy low spot. France create a ton and Portugal and the Jack Russells when they go behind. Fernando likes Switzerland. He says England hasn't impressed me. Them Swiss boys can attack Art and B. Says yes, Gareth Southgate is something else. Steve Gregory Southgate pubs his iPhone. Uh, on low battery mode at 99%. And Fernando Mendoza says England goalkeeper to have three or more saves at plus 130. Dan, you know, these guys kind of hit a little bit on this thing here. When it comes to England and their shitty form or lack thereof, uh, you know, we saw this team, they certainly battle with draws in mind and they like to go to those extras. They're not afraid to win by penalty kicks, but certainly things are down. The past two years, they've scored 35 goals in international competition. But Switzerland has only allowed 15. Swiss ranked third in the European Championships when it comes to scoring. They've got seven goals in four matches. England has, on the other hand, only allowed two goals in those four matchups, which is good for third. Do we see a high-scoring Swiss team go out there and shoot this ball? Uh, or do we see that England wants to park the bus and keep these guys on ice? What say you, Dan? Well, the, the big thing in this game is – the suspension that Mark Gay is serving. He has by far been the best player in that back line for the whole tournament. And with him missing is a major blow to their lineup. The other issue they have too is their other center back, John Stones, actually is having some some knee issues as well. Um, I've been following that really closely the last couple of days um, just because he's obviously a a key part in that defense, but like, you know, they, they want to get more than 70 minutes out of him, especially if uh, this game goes that extra 120 minutes, which their last game did. Um, they want to be able to keep their key players on. They don't want to be bringing off a key defender to bring on someone else. So it's going to, it's going to be really important that people check the lineups an hour before to see who they do end up slotting in at that back line. Cause I think even Kieran Trippier is uh, is is sort of has has a niggling injury. He had a few, a, a pretty serious injury uh, going into this tournament that he sort of just rehabilitated. Um, I actually saw him play here in Melbourne um, for a friendly game against Tottenham uh, a few weeks before the Euros. But it's looking like Joe Gomez and Luke Shaw are going to replace those players, and if that's the case, Luke Shaw is going to be matched up against Dan Adoy, who is just on fire right now and and Luke Shaw like they used to joke about Wayne Rooney eating all the pies Luke <laughs> Shaw loves eating pies as well so uh he's a tubby little left back um but he, he's a good player don't get me wrong but I just don't know if he's going to be able to keep up with this Swiss team who are just flying right now really um I think both teams to score is probably the best look in this game I was I was tempted to look at the over two and a half just because I could see this game going either way, um, you know, with a result inside the 90 minutes uh, with both teams to score. But I just think it's a safer bet to go with the both teams to score. And you can still get that at plus 150. or well, that's what I got it at. Um, but that's my main look in this game. Dan likes goals, Gaucho. Do you think we see a situation where both teams get the ball not only on target, but past the goalkeepers? What do you think? Yeah, you know this this total is set super low, um, and I do have it one one, which which would sink over the total. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I talk to these guys about uh, about soccer quite a bit, but I, I feel like I haven't really talked this one out much. But uh, I don't know. Lou got a hold of my notes because he, like <laughs> literally everything that I think about this game, he, he touched on. You know, the first thing I was going to do was bad mouth Gareth Southgate. Um, he needs to go. You know, I, I think short of winning the tournament, I think he will get fired, and I think he should get fired. Um, you know, he's he's uh, terrible. Uh, you know, Steve Gregory said uh, Southgate 
puts his uh, iPhone on low battery mode at 99%. That's the perfect way to describe this guy. Um, they, they have the best team on paper, and they are so boring. They're terrible. I mean, it, it, it's awful. Um, yeah, I like, a, I like a first half draw in this one around a pick em price. I think it stays cagey early. Uh, Dan touched on Endoya. Um, this guy, man, he's just shooting the ball like crazy. I, I think you take his uh, his over one and a half shots is a pretty good price. Um, I would maybe stay away from the shots on target because uh, I do think it, it stays pretty cagey for the most part. But I think he, he'll fire off the ball. I mean, whether he hits the frame or not is is really the question. But, um, yeah, I'll be on his shots. And uh, I got to be with I got to be with Switzerland. You know, I talked to a couple of sharp guys that bought in on England. Like I said, they were the betting favorites in this tournament. And, you know, that was that was part of their rationale is you're getting England at a pretty good price. But I have to be on the Swiss side, draw no bet, and get that at plus money. I think the likelihood of a draw is pretty darn high here. And, um, yeah, give me plus money on the Swiss side. But all that said, I, I do think that the draw is super likely. And I think penalties are super likely. So what I did, uh, you know, similar to Lou, I took a – I took a piece of the draw, and then I took each team to win on penalties. So if we get to penalties, you're bringing in a plus 800 no matter what. And I, I think plus 800 is is a really good price in a game that I, I think goes to penalties like, I don't know, 40% of the time. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Interesting battle here. Now, maybe I'm poisoned because I did watch this game with uh, the fellas' backs, or I should say the last game there with England. Uh, we had a little backstage viewing party, and uh, – uh, cussing up and down this English team. And I get it. You know, we look at kind of the roster. We look at the situation with these boys and uh, we see again, Harry Kane, not quite the Christian Ronaldo in terms of age, but he has scored twice. Big goal in extras uh, last time around. You mentioned Jude Bellingham, uh, two goals as well. Uh, kind of spread the ball around. So do these Swiss though. There's not really any one standout guy. They just like to pass this ball around and, Kind of everybody is more um, efficient and effective by keeping the ball moving and keeping the other team on their toes. Tricky spot because when I see England and I see the way that they like to play in their international competitions, especially when we get the championship battles, it means so much for these guys. But notching a win against the the English team in quarterfinal matchups in Euro 2024 would be a huge accomplishment for Switzerland. This game's got high stakes, a lot of meaning behind it. And I think because of that, we do see this aggressive play from from both sides. The play that I opted to go with here, at least pre-flop, as we wait for some of these lineups to come out. How about this one? I found it on DraftKings. First half tie, full game tie, under two and a half. Now, I can't see any goal explosion, but if we do see that 1-1 one, one spot that you guys have alluded to, this is going to pay out at plus 350. So a push in the first half, a push in the full game, and then under two and a half in regulation at plus 350. To me, just kind of felt on the surface with the stakes being high that um, might be a way to go. And uh, maybe that means that there is the draw. Uh, I guess we'll kind of wrap this one up and talk about some closing thoughts. But uh, Lou, we'll start with you. Any chance this thing gets to a draw? I got to do this for my guy, Big Show. Pick. He's in the chat. So I got to do it for him. Well, well, it's the Big Show. That's the only reason he showed up. I know this. He knows this. We all know this. Uh, now, you guys covered on it perfectly. I like the Endoy look a lot. Uh, yeah, man, this is just going to be a. I will send pictures of the Brits being in misery after game. I will DM them to you guys, and then I will post them publicly. And I then I'll the last picture will be of me in a bathtub full of money, laughing at their misery. Well, I had the the video of the English fans leaving the stadium early, and then they found out they scored, and they're they're trying to get back into the stadium. <laughs> you know, Treme- that was tremendous. It just sums up an English fan perfectly. I love it. Although with me, with sports, if that was me leaving, I'd have been convinced they never would have scored if I stayed in my seat. I'd have been like, well, I'm the reason. Me leaving caused that. You're welcome. I left early. I gave up on the team. And that was good enough for them to go out there and advance and move on to the next round. So uh, very much not a not an English soccer fan. The Lions seem to get a lot of love. They seem to be big fan favorites across the board. And, Anytime I fall into a situation where I'm looking at a fan favorite like that, I just want to find a reason to get on the other side. And I think there's an opportunity, though, with this draw, like I said, the under or the tie, tie, under. Uh, We kind of have mixed feelings across the board with this one.